Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos on set theory, is going to concentrate on two operators. Uh, two operators that are very, very important, but that they're subtly different to each other. The first operator is what's known as the element of operator. Okay, it's to test for set membership. Okay, if an object is contained within a set, uh, and then the second operator is what's known as the subset operator, which is going to test to see whether the contents of one set can be found in the contents of another set. Okay, but let's concentrate on the element of operator. So the element, the element of operator. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to just try to define this using some some notation. Okay, so its symbol, its symbol looks something like something like this. Okay, it's like an E. Okay, uh, or an epsilon. Yeah. Okay, that represents element of. Yeah. Its syntax. Okay. Its syntax is something like this. Okay. It can take anything. It's a it's a binary operator. Okay. It takes two operands. One on the left and one on the right. Okay, so what it takes is it can take anything, okay, on the left followed by the operator, but what must follow on the right hand side is a is a set. Okay, so what it does is it tests to see whatever's listed on the left hand side in its full full syntactic glory as it appears is it listed within the set on the right hand side. Okay, if it is, it returns true. If it's not, it returns false. So let's consider a set. Okay. So let's say let let x equal the set that contains the values two, three, a, and c as an example. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to ask some questions about some members of a, some some members of x. Okay. So for example, I might ask the question. Okay. Is is two an element of x? Okay. Now. For this to return true, what we see on the left-hand side of the operator must appear within the open and close curly brackets associated with the set and must appear in this particular form. So, is there a 2 listed in this set? Well, there is. So, 2 is an element of x. So, this is true. Okay. Let's try it again. Is, I suppose this should be a question mark here. Okay. Okay. Is A an element of X? Okay. Well, for A to be an element of X, it needs to be listed within within the set X. It needs to be listed within here. Okay. And there's A here, so this is true. Okay. And let's try something else. Is let's say four an element of X? Okay. That's a question. Well, for this to return true, 4 needs to be listed within the set X, okay? Here's the set X, here's its list, okay? So 4 needs to be listed here, which it's not. So in this case, this is false, okay? Let's ask another question, yeah? Is, let's say, is this an element of X, okay? Now once again, for this thing here to be an element of x, this thing here in its full glory, open curly brace, two, close curly brace, in other words, the set, needs to be listed in here, which it's not. So this is false, okay? As opposed to, let's say we have let, let y equal the set that contains the values, okay, two, three, a, and c, okay? You can actually see that this set actually looks different to the set X. This set Y looks different to the set X. Well, first of all, the set X contains four objects. Okay, The first object is a 2, the next object is a 3, then an A, and then a C. This set here contains four objects. This object here, which is a set with the object 2 inside it, Okay, followed by a 3, an A, and a C. Okay, So now if I ask the question, is this an element of y, okay, is that true or false? Well, once again, for something to be an element of something else, what appears on the left-hand side in its full syntactic glory, as you see it, must be listed within the set. And you can clearly see here that we have this particular set here, the curly bracket 2 curly bracket is listed here. There it is here. So this is actually true. 
So there's a there's a, something that's a little bit unusual. Well, it's actually really important, yeah, okay? The element operator tests to see whether something is listed in the set, okay? Where the something is the something in its full glory, okay? Let's try something else. Is is the empty set an element of the set X, okay? Hmm. Well, let's think about this here. If the empty set was an element of X, the empty set would be listed inside here, which it clearly isn't. So actually, this is false, okay? This is false. As opposed to, let me give you another set. Let the set Z equal the set that contains the values two, three, empty set, A, and C, okay? Now I can ask the question, is the empty set an element of Z? Is that true or false? Well, in this particular case, we act well for something to be an element of what's on the left hand side must be listed within this particular set. And clearly, the empty set is listed here. It is a member. It actually contributes to its cardinality. Okay, it is a member. It's physically there, and as such, it is an element of that set. So in this case, this is true. Now, I'm sure I'll get a number of messages or a number of. Uh, comments now on this particular video in relation to the element of okay uh, why is the empty set not an element of this set x okay why is the empty set an element of this set z when it's not an element of that set x now there's a subtle difference between the element of operator and the subset operator okay the element of operator is testing to see is what's listed over here also listed within the structure over here is it listed within the set? In other words, is it a member of the set? Okay. So guys, uh, that's how the element of operator works. Uh, it just tests to see whether something is actually listed within the set. What about the subset operator? Okay. So let's have a look at this. So the subset operator, okay, the way it's defined, okay, the subset operator, uh, it's symbol, okay, it's symbol, and okay, we're not talking about proper subsets here. We're just talking about the subset operator. The symbol looks something like this. Okay, its syntax, the way it works, okay, okay, is something like this. It takes a set on the left hand side, followed by the operator, followed by another set. Okay. okay. Now, how are we going to define this? Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's say it's something like this. Okay. So let's give a definition. Definition. Okay. Okay, so let's try to define what how the subset operator works. Yeah. Okay. So, given two sets, okay, x and y, okay, we say that x 